While Manuel Chavez Nogales is widely considered in contemporary Spain to be among the best writers of our 20th century, his books and his life remain forgotten for many decades after his death in London during the Second World War. These days, starting with this exhibition in Europe House, the talks at the British Library, and a book launch at the Instituto Cervantes, we are honoring Manuel Chavez Nogales' memory, for sure. And in doing so, we follow the steps of Spain's finest public intellectuals, who have come to see in the Andalusian writer an impressive mixture of literary style, demanding journalistic standards, political and moral lucidity, and personal decency. All this is now, thankfully, common opinion in Spain, where Chavez Nogales embodies the best civic values of our agitated and often tragic 20th century. And he could thus become an inspiration for those Spaniards that drove the country back to its European path. But I can hide from you, dear friends, that this is a very, a very moving occasion for many of us gathered here. Because Chavez Nogales' memory is hallowed in Spain, but he died in London, he is buried in London, and we felt the need to pay him tribute here in London. And I'm especially thankful to have Tony Jones, who is the grandson of Manuel Chavez Nogales, sharing this homage here with us today. As I am glad, I must say, of the efforts made by contemporary Spain to restore the dignity owed to Chavez Nogales and all the Spanish exiles. To all, that, to all those that poet Leon Felipe, himself an exile in Mexico, called the Spaniards of Exodus and Tears, los españoles del Exodo y del Llanto. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, 2019 marks the 80th anniversary of the Republican exile after the Civil War. But London was also a haven for Spanish liberals during the 19th century, and therefore several institutions are joining efforts to celebrate that Spanish mark here in the British capital. In this regard, speaking as director of Instituto Cervantes London, I have to thank all those individuals and organizations that are taking part in this, and of course a big heartfelt Gracias goes to Jeremy Sullivan of Europe House, uh, and Europe House, not only for hosting this exhibition, but for their constant support. Thank you very much, Sharon. I must say it makes perfect sense to hold this exhibition here because Chavez Nogales, who was an early critic of both fascism and communism, is not only a great Spaniard, but has an evident European dimension. Thanks, too, to the University of Seville and Luis Mendez, the real soul of this project. Thanks to cultural consultant Christian Ravina, who is always the best possible partner. And of course, I'm happy as usual to work hand in hand with our embassy and our dear cultural and scientific consular Miguel Oliveros, thanks to him as well. That's all from me now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, but I must say, no, this is not, lots of people are going to speak now, but uh, I am moved to see how many friends of Spain have gathered here today to pay homage to one of our best fellow countrymen. And I hope to see you soon in other activities we'll be holding during this year. Thank you very much. I'm Anthony Jones, which is not an obvious connection to Chavez Nogales. Uh, I'm, the, uh, I'm one of the sons of Pilar Chavez. Uh, my mother is the only living uh, daughter of Chavez Magales, who has four children. Uh, Mum is enjoying the sunshine in Marega <laughs> in her 99th year. In her 99th year. And as all mother sons have, I've just had, as we would say in Spain, una bronca. <laughs> and she's, uh, she's, she's giving me a real telling off. She said, well, why aren't I there? And I sort of said, well, because it's a long way to go and the likes, but I'll make sure that I represent you properly. And I want to reflect on tonight, uh, which obviously for us as a family is a great event, uh, the series, and, and obviously we're very grateful to the Instituto Cervantes, to the Embajada, to Europe House, to the University for <laughs> everything they've done, for the special touch that Christian brings to all exhibitions and, uh, and events. So for us as a family, it's, it's, it's a great moment. But it's a great moment because I want to reflect a little bit on London for Chavez Nogales, stressing that he died in 1944, and uh, I 
clearly didn't know him. <laughs> so my knowledge, like everybody's, I mean, I'm one of ten grandchildren <laughs> from Charles Morales. We're spread between Spain and uh, London. I live between both. So home is in Madrid, really. I would say home is where my dog is, and that's in Madrid. Um, and Charles Nogales is, is interesting because he's, uh, my grandfather is somebody who from very early on has an international perspective. And at a time when that's perhaps not as normal as it is today. My own daughters catch EasyJet like this to any part of the world. But in 1928, my grandfather hires a Junkers plane in 1928 and he flies across Europe and writes a book. You can see the map over there. And he writes a book, La Vuelta de Europa en Avión, describing what he sees in each place. And this is the start, I think, uh, of this understanding of, of Charles Nogales as an internationalist, as somebody with perspective that is much wider. My mother would say that the following year he made it even worse. So when she was nine, he brought her to school in England. She thought she was coming on a visit, and he left at the weekend. And she stayed in a school very early on at nine with no English, and she stayed at school here near Hastings. And she grew up for uh, about seven years going to school in, uh, in Hollington Park School in, uh, in Hastings. So the connection with London for our family starts very early. Uh, it starts very, very early. When the war breaks out in <coughs> Spain, Charles Nogales, uh, my grandparents, both of them, uh, Manuel and Anna, are here collecting two of their daughters, my mother Pilar and Josefina, when they hear the news that uh, the war has broken out in Spain. And they return, and they spend time in Madrid, and, they, and then eventually, as we know, and as they, the feature a lot is here, they uh, leave, when the government leaves Madrid to Valencia, they, they also leave Madrid. And they flee to, uh, to Paris. Unfortunately, my grandfather had interviewed some years earlier at Goebbels, and uh, a very interesting view. He'd, uh, amongst many international interviews, so he interviewed Kerensky about the Russian Revolution, he interviewed Goebbels, long before the rise of Nazism in Germany, or the strength of Nazism in Germany. In Germany. And, uh, and he, he writes a fantastic, uh, I was going to say appreciation, but that's the wrong word, uh, a fantastic analysis of Goebbels. So Goebbels puts some very specific conditions, uh, that there can only be three questions, and that can be no opinion expressed on how Goebbels answers them. So on the first page of the newspaper, Chavez uh, publishes the three questions and the answers. And then he writes the main editorial inside the paper in which he explains that this is the most grotesque man he's ever met <laughs> and the most dangerous man in Germany. In fact, more dangerous than, than Hitler. So Chavez Nogales is an internationalist. And of course, as his grandson, I see him through roast to his <coughs> Of course. But as well as an internationalist, I think he's also... Uh, a person who has, as, as we said earlier, curiosity. Curiosity. And his, um, his interest is in how things are happening, why things are happening, the reflection of things. So I'll share one, one other anecdotal story. From Paris, he flees to London, and the family returns to Spain. And tragically, he dies here in London, and the family are in Spain, and they get occasional letters from him from London because of censorship and everything else. And in amongst them, uh, my Tio Pablo, my Uncle Pablo, who is a young boy, doing what young boys do, kicking footballs and throwing stones in the pueblo of, uh, of El Ronquillo. And a letter comes from his father, and he's probably, I don't know, nine years at this stage, going, and Pablo, how's Pablo doing? And in Spanish, the letter says, reflexiona. Does he reflect on important things? To which my mother replied, no, he doesn't. He's throwing stones at windows, because <laughs> that's what nine-year-olds do. But I think this tells you a little bit of the essence of Charles Nogales. In his own family, he's looking for that reflection, for that understanding. We've got a great exhibition here. And once again, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who's put it together. There are going to be some, some interesting talks. 
if Charles Nogales was here, and I have this only second hand from my mother and my grandmother and other members of my family, he would say, what's all this fuss about? <laughs> because one of the interesting things about Charles Nogales is he, he was never, in fact, finding him, photographs of him in action or film is almost impossible to find because he's never the star. He's always at the side observing, analyzing, writing, and sharing. I would say that the one message I'd say is, thank you for being here. We're very proud of his work. And we think the most important thing is perhaps less than his life is his work. So if I had one last message to say, I'd say, love the exhibition, but please read his work and reflexion. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, at the beginning of his book, Amber Monte, Killer of Bulls, uh, whom he calls uh, a child of a street in Seville, he interprets his, uh, his description of the bullfighter's childhood with reflection on the tools of his trade, without simple ones. The street is a synthesis of the world, he tells us. The human landscape of that white street in Feria neighborhood of Seville provides him with the opportunity to explain that he who understand his immediate, immediate surrounding can understand the world. In this book, he shed light with his pain on what uh, will become dazzlingly evident in his report of Europe, his ability and challenge to see uh, things that other people barely uh, notice. Uh, Chavez always looks uh, with the curiosity of a child of this child, uh, the complex reality of Europe. The talent to perceive the multiple nuances of uh, seemingly incidental events combined with the keen journalist intuition that enabled him to predict how these events would evolve into more complex phenomena, led to analytical newspaper articles about the major events uh, he witnessed, for example, the Russian Revolution, Nazi Germany, and Hitler occupation of France, and the resistance of England at the, at the end of this uh, exhibition. Today, historians look to Charles Nogales' article as important sources for understand uh, those barriers. Written in exile in France and England, his report for him an international reputation, but it's necessary to discover in Europe, in Europe the important, the role important that this uh, figure, because Charles Nogales uh, was a journalist, was a writer and reporter, but he, uh, he symbolized the third Spain, the Spain that defended uh, democratic values. And the Universidad Civil and the rest of cultural institutions recognized him as a journalist who embodied the finest human and professional uh, values. And this, the exhibition is being held in London because this is the city in which he found the freedom and independence to continue his work and to continue exploring the issues that more interested him. Uh, Chavez Nogales, uh, unshakable democratic uh, conviction and his talent for decoding uh, the subtle message with, with it, the totalitarian regimes constructed the narrative to capture people interests have led us with a magnificent corpus of words for understanding what happened in the Spain and in the Europe that led him to London and his final uh, refuge. He never succumbed to the spell of these totalitarian regimes uh, instead uh, using apparent anecdotes to explain them. For example, when he used the figure of the flamenco dancer Juan Martinez to explain the social changes and the political changes in Russia. He shed light on a complex international reality with a clarity that, that, uh, that doesn't uh, us today. Chavez Nogales died in 1944, um, but people still read this publication not only to understand his version of events, the important, importance of the historical and the political events, but to try and understand the things that may yet happen. And this is the reason to organize this exhibition. Thank you. Um, the Spanish Embassy is really happy that we finally pay this homage to Chavez Nogales because it's justice and he deserved it. Uh, in these days, Spain is commemorates uh, the 80th anniversary of the Republican exiles. The government has created a commission to 
to organize a series of events and activities and considers this homage an actual need to pay the tribute that they deserve. It is a question of justice. The Instituto Cervantes and the Office for Cultural and Scientific Affairs want to give the right dimension of this Spanish diaspora that also reached the UK. The Spanish Republic and Exile gathers a group of Spanish citizens that during and after the Civil War were forced to abandon their homeland and live in another country. This exile was due to political and ideological reasons, also by fearing the reprisals of the new authoritarian regime installed in Spain from 1939. All of them left Spain with the idea of returning once the political circumstances were back to democracy. But the endurance of the Franco regime made these exiles to adapt and became citizens of the new nations they were based, contributing in many cases to the artistic and intellectual life of the adopting countries. Most of the first refugees in 1939 were established in France, nearly about half a million, they started immediately to suffer the effects of the Second World War. During the 40s, about 200,000 exiles were back to Spain. What kind of people were the, these exiles? These exiles were ordinary people, but among them there were many ex-fighters, politicians, civil servants that were compromised with the Republic, but also many others were just relatives, ci citizens, children, intellectuals and artists scientist and teacher, and also highly skilled professionals. This way, Spain has lost a great deal of value people that will not be part of the new Spain, but uh, create a parallel artistic, poetic and intellectual Spain, Spanish movement. France, Mexico and Argentina were the main destination, destination for exiles, but also Colombia, Venezuela, Cuba, the Soviet Union, the US and of course the United Kingdom. With the years, the internal evolution of Spain and the process of reconciliation ended with a political transition to democracy and allowed the exile to return to Spain. Nevertheless, many of them remain in the host countries where they found refuge and developed a new life. Hundred years before these uh, Republicans exiles, there was also a movement of the Spanish exiles that were known as the liberal exiles. They had to uh, abandon Spain during the kingdom of Ferdinand VII. I'd like to bring here the impressions that this group of Spaniards that live here in London uh, made on a very young Thomas Carlyle, the, the, the British historian. And he described, I, I want to read it because it's really interesting what Carlyle described about this bunch of Spanish exiles in 19th century. In those years, a visible section of the London population, a conspicuous out of all proportion to its sizes or value, was a small knot of Spaniards who had sought shelter here as political refugees. Political refugees. A tragic succession of that class in one of the possessions of England in our time. Six and twenty years ago, when I first saw London, I remember those unfortunate Spaniards among the new phenomena. Daily, in the cold spring air and the skies unlike their own, you could see a group of 50 or 100 stately tragic figures in proud threadbare cloaks, preambulating, mostly with closed lips, the broad pavements of Euston Square and the regions about St Pancras New Church. The lodging was chiefly in Somers Town as I understood, and those open pavements about St Pancras Church were the general place of rendezvous. They spoke little or no English, knew nobody, could employ themselves on nothing in this new scene, old steel grey heads, many of them the shaggy, thick, blue-black hair, or other struck you, their brown complexion, dusky look of suppressed fire, in general, the tragic, the tragic condition of, an, of a caged Numidian lion. This is uh, an example that it wasn't the first time that a bunch of Spaniards were based here in London at exile. Uh, even for very radical 
different political reasons, 100 years before, there were another bounds of Spaniards exiled here. And from them also flourish many intellectuals and important writers. But today is the, the evening for Chavez Nogales, and we want to stand up for him and to single out this uh, brilliant Spanish Republican exile as an example of all the Spanish people, ordinary people, all of the citizens that are here in England during the last centuries. Thank you.